Glad to have you with us here on the program. This is the Retirement Education Hour. I'm Megan Mozak here with financial instructors, Kurt Cassidy and Dr. Paul Mettler of the Retirement Education Foundation. You can connect with Kirk and Paul by going to their Facebook page, just search Retirement Education Foundation, and you can be up to speed on all that Kirk and Paul are doing right here in our community, helping us get to and through retirement successfully, helping us feel more confident. And part of that is getting more information about these courses that are taught uh, by Kirk and Paul around the community, and they're doing them virtually right now. So we'll be giving you information on how you can get registered. If you'd like to go to the website and start registering right now, you can do that. Go to retirementplanningedu.com. That's retirementplanningedu.com. Kirk, Paul, this is uh, an election year, and I know there's been a lot of buzz already about what's going to go down in November. A lot of people wondering how that could affect their plans for retirement. Maybe they're newly retired. They're thinking about stepping away from the workforce. How much does who is in the White House or elections at all, how much does that impact the success or failure of our retirement plans? Well, well, it's called the silly season for a reason, right? <laughs> I like that. It, it is. And with the silly season comes a lot of misinformation. Look, historically speaking, elections haven't had that much of an impact on markets. Typically over time, markets do great, right? And that's that's the that's the bottom line, despite, you know, maybe what you feel, believe, or think. And I know a lot of people, historically speaking, have made really bad judgment poor decisions based upon what elections might have and what happened and outcomes. Now, I, I, I do believe, Paul, this election may have a little more of an impact than we've ever experienced before because of the nature of where we are politically and as divisive as our country has become uh, over the last year or so. But, you know, I, I think today we're going we're gonna to try to shed some light on historical data about elections and then some of the things that were we're a little concerned about and um, and how it impacts specifically retirees because while over any long period of time, I mean, it doesn't matter really who's in the, in the White House. It really doesn't, but it does impact those people who are transitioning into retirement. These short-term market events have more impact on those people within five to 10 years of retirement or in retirement than anybody else. And those are the people we're concerned with, Paul. Yeah, I'm, actually, I'm glad you clarified because mm -hmm. because there is a difference. You you said earlier that elections don't have an impact in the market. I think what you're saying is the actual election can actually move a market up or down quite a bit, but who's in office doesn't make a difference. So thank you. Right. So short term, we know right that you know when President Trump was elected, you know there was a lot of fear and anxiety, and initially there was an impact. So in the short run, the elections can have a pretty big impact, but in the long run. At the end of the day, and we have a lot of great data to show us really who's in the office doesn't have nearly the impact as so many other things. And at the end, I think what we're going to talk about is it really actually doesn't matter. You know, if, if you plan right, it shouldn't matter anyways. And we'll get into that. So talk about the class. Talk about the class. So, well, and, and Paul, one, one point, and, and I'll get into this. One point is that everyone has been saying this for years that don't allow the election to impact your investment decisions. This one time particularly for those people transitioning into retirement, we do need to pay attention. More, not about who's being elected or how, what's going to happen during that election, but it will, will, we're, we're going to experience some volatility, and that impact to your retirement plan is pretty significant, and that's why we're going to encourage people. You've got a four-month window before this election, more COVID issues. There's a lot going on, and you need to build yourself a retirement plan. You need to understand how and when to take income from which accounts at what age so that you don't outlive money. So we've been teaching these courses at all the major universities for about 10 years now. It's a seven hour course. We're streaming them live and we're teaching small groups. It's $29 to attend. That tuition goes to charity. And if you'd like to register, go to retirementplanningedu.com. Retirementplanningedu.com. Kirk and Paul, I want to make sure that people know that that website is available to them. Anytime you want to learn more, get registered, you can go 
to retirementplanningedu.com, or you can call, here's that number again, 800-240-8981. Talking about politics, the current state of the market, is it true that sometimes people allow, because we see so much of it in the news, they allow the churning of the political machine to dictate far more than they should when it comes to their finances? So here's the thing. There's no question that, that there's a lot of psychology to the market and people's perceptions have a huge impact. I, again, I remember before Trump was elected, I remember meeting people saying, I'm going to cash because they didn't like him. And at the end of the day, the market's up 35% since Trump's been in office. And they're still in cash. And they're still in cash. <laughs> here's the deal. On both sides of the aisle, Republicans think when a Democrat gets elected, it destroys the market. When Democrat, you know, Democrats think the same thing. But we have some data to show that both parties at different times, the mar- we've had huge bull markets when both parties have been in the office. And the market's gone down when both parties have been in the office. And typically, it's not the president. There are so many other variables and factors that impact the market unrelated to who's in the office. I, okay. There's the show. (laughs) I mean, no, truly. I mean, there is. There's so many variables. And uh, I am worried, just like when Trump was elected, the fear, the panic that uh, people are going to take the same approach. And that isn't, no matter what your beliefs are, you you cannot just run from the markets. We're going to need the markets over any retirement plan. You're going to need to be in the market and you're going to need to be market most of the time, if not all the time. It's knowing how to make sure you're sheltering the proper dollars to be able to access those dollars during volatile times and not access the dollars during volatile times that are exposed to that volatility. It's really that simple is being strategic about when and how we take income from which accounts at what age, minimizing taxes and just understanding income planning, which is so different than investing. Really, investing is the easiest part of what we do, and it's the easiest part of what we teach in our classes. So, again, we're going to encourage you, invest in, a retire, in your retirement by educating yourself. Seven hours of a class, seven hours, 200-page textbook. It's $29 to uh, attend, and, and your tuition goes to charity. So make this investment, prepare yourself for retirement, educate yourself, learn how to construct a comprehensive retirement plan. You can go to retirementplanningedu.com, retirementplanningedu.com, or call 800-240-8981. Back with Kirk and Paul right after this. Glad you're with us here on the Retirement Education Hour. Megan Mozak alongside Kirk Cassidy, Dr. Paul Mettler. They are financial instructors with the Retirement Education Foundation talking about 2020. A lot going on this year and adding to the mix, it's an election year. As Kirk calls it, it's silly season. And boy, that means new person potentially in the White House, maybe new legislation coming down the pike. And what does that mean for you? What does it mean for your retirement? A lot of questions swirling right now considering the pandemic and everything going on. And Kirk and Paul, the the great thing is that you provide a pathway to clarity and you do that through the courses that you teach. There are seven to eight hour courses. There's a virtual option for you to be able to attend. If you are serious about getting a plan for your retirement future, in spite of all the uncertainty we have going on right now, I want you to head over to the website. You can get registered right now. Retirementplanningedu.com is the website. Again, it's retirementplanningedu.com. You can also register by phone, 800-240-8981. Election season, Kirk and Paul, is it as bad for our retirement as a lot of us think it may be? Well, historically speaking, the the data doesn't suggest that it's it's from a long term perspective, it matters really, right? I mean, it, it really it doesn't really matter long term perspective what it's going to do from an investment perspective and an economic perspective. The markets have gone up and they continue to go up, and it's been some time since it hasn't gone up. So, the thing we're concerned with, and I, I'm hoping we're not confusing people because we are concerned. Um, We're concerned that you have a four-month window to get your affairs in order from a financial perspective and get yourself a retirement plan because we're going to see some volatility. 
And depending on who wins, we, we have an opinion, and, and I, I think many experts have a similar opinion that we could see some real significant volatility. With volatility, Paul, you know a lot about this with your background, comes irrational emotions and bad decisions and, and poor planning. I mean, even if you're rational and you're not emotional and you don't panic, you still can make a lot of mistakes in that small window between five years of retirement through five years after retirement. If something bad happens in the market, Paul, and you don't plan properly, no matter how rational or irrational you may be, without a really effective plan to know how to manage that, you're in trouble. For sure. In fact, in fact, anyone who's listening who, uh, who retired around last March, yep. right? my guess is I don't care how disciplined you were or psychologically you know, sophisticated or how little anxiety you typically experience, I guarantee you that if you retired in February and you took your first paycheck from yourself out of the stock market in March, I assume you were pretty anxious, right? Yep. Because you didn't know what April was going to be like or May and, and you're taking money out of an account that may be down 20, 30%. It doesn't, it really actually doesn't matter how, you know, how calm you are. You're not going to be calm in that situation. Well, okay. So let's take the emotion out of it in 2000, right? So if right. you didn't panic in 2000, you lost a decade, right? Right. We lost a decade in, and as a result, if you retired then, some of those people are going to run out of money. They're going to run out did, of money. And did run out of money. And again, in 2007, 2008, people who made bad decisions took money from the wrong accounts at the wrong time. They're going to eventually see the, they may not feel it yet, but they're going to see the impact of that. See, that's the problem. The, the, they don't get an immediate result or impact. They can't quantify making the mistake they don't even know many people don't people don't even know they're making a mistake when they make a mistake in retirement it won't show up for 20 years 15 20 25 years and then it's too late there's no do-over that's what makes this time so different than any other time so you know i have an interesting story so i've had a friend come over over the weekend and he brought me he brought me a literally probably a hundred page report he paid about a thousand dollars i'm not going to tell you who it is you know this person and, and this, and he was really excited about it. He was oh. like, look it, I have X percent op chance. I'm going to succeed. And what I showed him was, <laughs> I showed him the 99% probability was him. I think, you know, living on $50,000. I said, he's living on 150 now. When you look at the $90,000, you know what his probability was 70%. So I said to him, how do you feel if you're one of the 30% that fail? And when do you think you're going to know it? That's and the and I sort of got a light bulb hit and he thought he wants to retire at 68. He won't know until after he retires, whether he's one of the 70% or one of the 30%. He won't, he may not know for 15 years, Paul, that's after right. he retires. For sure. And that's the problem. That's what's different. That everyone's trying to use this same playbook in retirement, like buy and hold. And by the way, that's our belief. We're buy and hold investors. So people really think what's going to drive their performance and success is what they invest in. And that's not it. I, the, the industry's lying to you. That's what you invest in is not going to determine whether you succeed or fail. It's your income plan when you're taking money out of which accounts and how you behave when the markets are down, how you behave when the market's up, how would you behave when the market is sideways, knowing how to manage your income during all these periods and trying to create some tax efficiency is what's going to help you to succeed. And so, Paul, going back to your friend, light bulb goes off. It, just because a light bulb goes off doesn't mean they know what to do to change it, right? So the light bulb goes off just means they're going to be more anxious once they retire. It just means that first 10 years of retirement, they're going to be extra cautious. Actually, you want to, well, I'm going to tell you what he thought. What? So his salute, when that light bulb went off, his first response is, I, I need to go to more bonds. I swear, this is what he said. Yeah, oh and, he, and, and right now he's already 70% bonds and he's 57 years old. And, and he wants to go even more bonds. That was his solution. Yeah. It, so, and you're making what in bonds? You're not keeping up with 10% high yield, junk bonds, by the way. Oh, that's smart. <laughs> yes. That's good. So, it's horrible. That's we laugh, but this is what he paid, industry... money for, he paid money for this. I know. I know. And that's why, uh, uh, Paul. You know, I, I hope people recognize our passion. I hope they believe our passion. I, I, we don't come on here talking about our personal practice, with the exception of a story here or there. 
We don't promote our personal practice. We're promoting an educational event that we've been doing for 10 years where the proceeds go to charity, right? So that we can educate our public, our consu- the, the, the community on how to avoid making mistakes that our industry is leading them down, this trap, this I'm going to live on less than I can afford to because I'm fearful or I'm going to make a bad call and I'm not going to realize it for 15 years and now I can't fix it. That's why you need to come to a seven-hour class. We're teaching at all the major universities and we're also streaming them live. Small groups and streaming live. $29 to attend. Register at retirementplanningedu.com, retirementplanningedu.com, or you can call 800-240-8981. Much more with Kirk and Paul straight ahead. It's always a pleasure to be here with Kirk Cassidy and Dr. Paul Mettler with the Retirement Education Foundation. They are financial instructors, and you can connect with them on Facebook. Simply search for their page, Retirement Education Foundation. Make sure you like that page, follow it, and you can be in the know with everything Kirk and Paul are doing right now to help us get retirement ready right here in our community. And speaking of being retirement ready, it does take education. And that's the thing that Kirk and Paul love to provide, especially right now during this season of uncertainty. I would encourage you to get registered for one of their upcoming courses. And they're being taught virtually. If that's a way you'd like to attend, they make it very simple to do that. You can get registered by going to retirementplanningedu.com. That's retirementplanningedu.com or register on the phone. Just call 800-240-8981. Different elections throughout the years have had different economic impacts. We've seen that going back decades, right, Kirk and Paul, and we're up against a presidential election this year. What can history teach us about what may be in store for us? So, so Paul, you know, this is something I know you, you've spent a lot of time looking back historically to see how the markets have reacted to uh, Democratic and, and Republican presidents, and even specific presidents where people made predictions why don't you share some of those? Some well, of those, those so you numbers. said one, right? You said earlier on, right? So before, prior to Trump being elected, that's the most recent, right? Yep. There, were, there were people who were so afraid of him being elected, they literally went to cash, yep. still in ca- cash now. And the market, as we know, has done incredibly well. And obviously, we had a little issue related to small one, a small one right? Which is really the real issue, right? The, it's not the president. It's the issue of the pandemic. But under Trump, the market's up 35%. Right. I remember before Obama got elected. Right. Obama was considered a a non free enterprise president. Some called him even a socialist. He openly disagreed with many CEOs. Many market managers didn't like him under his presidency. The market was up one hundred and forty eight percent. Right. George Walk, George Bush, the dad. Right. Everyone was worried when he was going to increase taxes. Oh, my God, it was going to destroy the, the market. During his presidency, the market was up 50%. He only was a one-term president, right? right? So, but his son, who is probably in some ways the most free market president we've had in a long period of time, right? Very much pro-business. Under his, under his uh, presidency, he ended with the market being down, I think, about 26%, right? Now, if we look at all of these, what were the variables that really impacted this? 9-11, President Bush had no control over, right? Right. He had no control over it. Pandemic? Trump has no control over it, right? There are so many other variables that impact whether the market does well or doesn't do well. And presidents love tooting their horn, saying, I'm the reason, right? Clinton, market was up tremendously. We could talk about Clinton, right? So at the end of the day, it's typically not the president. It's a lot of other variables that impact whether the market goes up or goes down. I agree. I agree. No matter how much we want to try to rationalize ourselves, because I know there's people listening saying, come on. but the data just supports what, what you're saying, Paul. I mean, I, I think you probably went into some, doing some of this research with some bias thinking you would find a particular outcome, and, and I'm sure you were surprised by Compl- it. Totally surprised. I mean, yeah. honestly, I didn't realize that during the President Bush number one yeah. that the market did well. Yeah. I, I, honestly, I'm, I thought the actually market did poorly, and, and I, I didn't think so. And, and obviously, President Carter. I thought President Carter, the market actually – did okay during President Carter. Your point, you say this all the time, 
as, as long as you're disciplined, the market over most years is going to go up, not down. Well, Paul, let's, I, I, and I'm going to do some reading, which I normally don't do, because I want to make sure I get these data points right, because your point to uh, time, right? When we look at every five-year rolling return, let's look at what you came up with. Any five-year rolling return, the upside positive is 28%. Downside, the worst five-year rolling return is a negative 3%. That's the worst five-year rolling return we've ever had is Negative three percent, right? Right. Now read. Now read one year. This hold goes, on. Hold on. Okay. I'm, I'm going to go ten years. I'm going to okay. go reverse. Ten years. The worst rolling ten year return we've ever had over a ten year period was negative one percent, and that was the 2000 lost decade, right? Right. The worst twenty year rolling return we've ever had is a positive six percent average rate rate of return. Isn't that credible? It's time. I mean, it's time. I keep telling everybody. Right. And then if we just look at one year period. Um, the high 47%, that's the greatest one year, which is, is this year. That's right. Right now. That's right. Right. Yeah. And the lowest is a negative 39%. Right. And this gets to your point that at the end of the day, what really matters from a retirement planning perspective is if you're retiring and you're immediately starting to take money out that year and, and you, and the market's down 39%, which can happen. Then what happens to you? Paul, let's, see, let's make it even more simple because I'm afraid some people are going to say, well, you know, to have that much volatility, it just isn't – I'm not going to get trapped that frequently. It doesn't take that much. I mean, I, we show examples in our class where retiring between one year and another year was the difference of someone running out of money at 86 years old versus the other one having uh, like $1.4 million at 96 years old. Or another example where over a 30-year period – in the first three years, they lost a total of 15% over a three-year period. The total. So you, we say this. Explain for a moment a little detail why that is. Well, and I, I think we're going to talk about it at the end of class. It's called, I mean, at the end of class, I'm so used to teaching class. At the end of the radio show, it's the sequence of return risk. It's when am I taking income and what is the market doing when I'm taking income from those accounts, right? And so, you know, Paul, we come on our radio show talking about the war on seniors and savers, low interest rate environment, bonds. That can't be the solution to your retirement. But bonds can prevent and reduce some volatility, so it's got to be part of your retirement plan, right? And, and it's funny. We've said bonds is not the solution over the next 20 years as, a, as an asset class. We don't think it's going to perform well. Bonds aren't going to do well in a rising interest rate environment. And so now we're not alone in that belief. So the, the, the solution people have gone to is greater equity exposure, which means you're going to be exposed to more volatility taking money out. That increases your chances of outliving your money. So it's not just a performance plan in retirement. It is an income plan in understanding how to minimize the traps of outliving your money. And that's what we're teaching in our classes. How do you construct a plan to avoid outliving our money? Not just you, but your surviving spouse. Where are the traps? How are the traps? So come to a seven-hour class. We're going to teach you how to build your own retirement plan. It's $29 to attend, and the tuition goes to charity. If you'd like to register, go to retirementplanningedu.com, retirementplanningedu.com, or call 800-240-8981. And we have much more with Kirk and Paul straight ahead. Glad to have you with us right here on the Retirement Education Hour. Megan Mozak with Kirk Cassidy and Dr. Paul Mettler. They are financial instructors with the Retirement Education Foundation. And you can learn a lot more by connecting with them on their Facebook page. Make sure you search for Retirement Education Foundation. And if you'd like to get registered for their courses, they're teaching them virtually. You're welcome to do that. Simply go to the website, retirementplanningedu.com or call 800-240-8981. When you look at the events of 2020, we know this is an election year. We've seen tremendous market volatility. We're in the middle of a pandemic. Boy, Kirk and Paul kind of feels like a perfect storm here. What's in store for the markets? Well, I, w I just did an interview with Fox 2 Detroit. And the topic that I chose to discuss with them was the, it's the year of the extremes, right? We saw 
we had at the beginning of the year the best employment numbers we've had in modern the modern era to the worst employment numbers we had in the modern modern era. We saw the market at an all time high and in in twenty two days lose thirty four percent. It's the year of extremes. We have two political parties who have seen like seems like they've been hijacked by the two extremes on both sides, extreme, right? We've got COVID. It's just everything seems so extreme. We have a third of people over the age of 65 at Fidelity go to cash, Paul, at the bottom, right? During the market crash, over 30% of people over the age of 65 years old. We're talking about $7 trillion at Fidelity. That's how much money is held at Fidelity. Over 30% of the people over 65 went to cash, fear, right? And so right now we have more cash on the sidelines right now than we had in 2009. And now we have an election coming up. We have the end of PPP, unemployment uh, benefits. The additional benefits are ending on the 25th. And uh, extremes of the party talking crazy, both sides. There's no compromise. There's no middle. I think, personally, I think this is going to um, cause a lot of people who are relative like your friend getting close to retirement or those people in retirement they're going to um they're going to freeze they're going to panic they're going to do nothing and doing nothing can sometimes be worse than actually taking action and and being proactive to prevent mistakes right and i just think everyone is froze going to be frozen and not sure what to do which way to turn what to believe look if biden wins there are some policies that are being promoted right now that I think is part of the agenda that is going to create some short-term market, significant market volatility. If Trump wins, I think short-term markets might be a little more stable. There's more certainty. It's more predictable. But and, and I'm not making any suggestion politically one party or the other in terms of what it means long-term to the markets because I think Paul has proven that it's irrelevant. It really is. But short term, with every the extremes we have experienced, all the perfect storm we're experiencing, I think there's going to be a lot of fear and mistake. People are going to when people are scared, they make mistakes, Paul. Yeah, they become frozen because you know they don't, people don't know what to do, and and I think right now people don't want to do. And sort of going back to my friend, I mean, he he turned to me. He's my friend, and he said, "So what do you think I should do?" You know, his next step was to go all in cash. And no. but but but, but you know. If you think about it, it's easy for us to say no, though, right? Yeah. If you think about it, you know, depending on what tools you have in your toolbox. So the only tools he has in his toolbox that he knows of is buying equities or buying bonds. That's it. Yep. He, he knows no other tools. And him and I talked about bonds and some concern about bonds. And he, he was like, so what do I do? And, you know. I would interrupt. Can I tell you what he needs to do? Yeah, go for it. He needs to attend a class. I mean, right. he's your friend. I'm surprised he hasn't. Most of friends, family go to the classes, right? He really needs to come to the class so he can learn that it's not the investments that are going to drive his performance in retirement. It's going to be his income plan, when and how he takes income from where and how and why and Social Security and taxes. And, and he doesn't need to allow. He does. And in fact, I'm, I, I am going to invite him to, to add. To, here's the crazy thing. Not only is his advisor charging a lot of money. He's all in mutual funds, yeah. and he and and he and no, he, and he thought he was with an institutional manager. He thought he was getting a break because of, it was a family discount. And at the end of the day, I looked at you know what he's what he has. I know some of the mutual funds. I told him about what I thought he was paying. He had no idea. It's really frustrating. Our industry, I, you know. Listen, if people really realized that it's voodoo. I mean, like, there's no one has secret sauce out there. There's no manager that's got this figured out that's going to help. It really isn't that com- the investment part is really not complicated. What's complicated and what takes time and why it's not promoted and people don't talk about it in our industry is the planning and the understanding how to map this out. And it, look, our class is seven hours, right? It doesn't take us seven hours to teach you how to buy investments, right? It takes seven hours because we're going to teach you how to construct a re- an income plan to know when and how to take income and how do I protect my surviving spouse? What happens to my surviving spouse when I die? Oh, taxes actually go up? How much income do you really need in retirement? That's another thing you told me about your friend is they convinced them that he's somehow going to live on half the income that he's living, less, less than half. Less than half, actually. I mean, I, seriously, what are they teaching these people? Like, right. 
all of a sudden you have 2,500 extra hours a year because you're not working, you're mid-60s, and you, you've been serving money your whole life. You want to go on vacations. You want to do on – dude, why are you going to spend less money? We know. We talk about this in the class. 66% of you, when you retire that first five years, are going to spend more money that first five years than you spent the last five years you were working. You are going to spend more money during those go-go years when you're healthy and you're active and want to do things. If you have the resources, and I think this is where the problem comes in is because a lot of the research studies, a lot of the information that is being sent to the general public, everyone thinks it applies to them. And you got to understand, if you've got resources, you're ahead of almost 40% of retirees because almost 40% of retirees are living retirement just on Social Security. That's all they've got. That's what they have. So this idea that you're going to live on less is crazy. It's just so much bad information and shortcuts. They are looking for simple answers for people so that they don't have to spend the time planning. And that's what we're going to teach you how to do in the class and why we spend so much time. Look, we're teaching at all the major universities. We're at all the major universities. This must be a credible course, right? It's a seven-hour course. You're paying $29 to charity to attend the course. We're going to take you through a 200-page textbook. Invest in your retirement and attend one of our classes. You can do it in person in a small group right now, or you can attend it virtually. We're streaming them constantly right now. If you'd like to register, you can go to retirementplanningedu.com, retirementplanningedu.com, or call 800-240-8981. Back with Kirk and Paul straight ahead. Great to be here with Kirk Cassidy and Dr. Paul Mettler for another edition of the Retirement Education Hour. We're glad you're spending some of your day with us today. If you'd like to be in touch with Kirk and Paul, you can do that on Facebook. Make sure you follow their page. You can search for Retirement Education Foundation. And if you'd like to get further educated, about your retirement plans and how to have that retirement you can feel confident in, I'd encourage you to get registered for one of their upcoming courses. And they're teaching these in small groups and also giving you a virtual classroom. If you'd like that experience, you can get registered at retirementplanningedu.com or you can call 800 240 8981. When we're living in such uncertain times and we have an election before us, Kirk and Paul, how does this make people think about their finances, their retirement future, and how are they behaving? Well, I I think this is the topic that goes ignored so frequently. So people can do math. They can run spreadsheets. They can run probability of success and charge $1,000 to run a program that takes them 10 minutes. (laughs) <laughs> talking about your friend again, but the behavior of people as you age tends to look, there is a stereotype. We talk about this in the class a lot. And I, and I say it, I say this all the time. The perception is older people are cheap and it's just, it's, it's, I don't, that's not true. It's not cheap. They're scared. Fear drives people's behaviors when it comes to spending. So, and, and I think it's driven by Paul, the relationship with money, right? We've spent our whole life, Paul, serving money, serving, saving, making sure we can pay for our kids, our children's education, pay for our homes, save for retirement, save for the rainy day funds. We have been serving money, watching the scoreboard of our investments our whole lives. And so it's, I mean, you, you've created a behavior, right? That needs to change and your relationship with that money needs to change and evolve as you retire it needs to become about you allowing that money to serve you and how it's most going to most effectively serve you and there's the a disconnect because our industry still promotes it as you're serving money and they don't really help you transition through effective planning so that you can you can have that freedom the elimination of the fear of outliving your money so that you can go allow that money to serve them and go do the things they want to do. Yeah, and that's, I'm preaching to you no, that no. something, this no, is no, what you studied but, in school. I but mean, you know, that fear is, is powerful. And sometimes the fear is, is just illogical. If I can, and I don't mean to be rude, but just is. And, and I, I just think of somebody I met, I don't know, about three, four months ago 
who was sitting in cash, had been in cash for a while prior to Trump being elected, went into cash, about a half a million dollars and had maybe about 750 total net worth. So a good portion. And when I sat down with her and we talked about planning, she basically said, I- I'm not going to I'm not going to invest my money in the market until after the election, because I'm not going to give him him, meaning Trump, my money, <laughs> which put aside the fact that he's not getting her money. This woman is she's fairly educated. She, right, she's well, got to understand no, that it's not giving. But here's the thing. Trump- at the end of the day, education, knowledge, logic is does, has nothing to do with anxiety. Right. It has right. nothing to do with fear. And at the end, some of the smartest people in the world suffer with a lot of anxiety. Right. So the problem is she's bought into this perception that whoever gets elected is going to ultimately determine her her life. And, and the sad truth is she's lost. You know, she's lost the whole upside in the market over the last, you know, almost four years and is going to continue to. And and what I said to her is, OK, so let me ask you a question. So what if Trump gets elected? Then what are you going to do? I'm going to stay in cash. Really? That's, I mean, she's this woman is eight years. This woman is is early, late 50s, early 60s. How is that even practical? Well, it's just unfortunate because there's a great example of no, she is not going to be able to live the retirement she otherwise could have with some good effective planning. But she's not that uncommon. No, of the course The point is she's not that uncommon. Of course not, right? I mean, so so she she is going to compound that mistake if Biden then gets elected. And it's pretty likely. I mean, I, there's not many people that don't think we're going to see a short-term market event if Biden gets elected, which is not long term, but short term. And so your entry point is important. It's, it's so funny because I, I try to explain to people because people always want to time the markets. And when I t- explain to people, if we just look at the last 20 years and you tried to time the market just a little bit and you missed just 30 of the best days, if you missed just 30 of the best, uh, 30 of the best days over 20 year period, that's over 20 years, just missed 30 days. You have a negative return over 20 years. You've lost money. 30 of the best days, Paul. So your entry point is important. Not going in and out is important. Most important in retirement, which I think we're going to talk about next segment, is the importance of making sure you know what account and having the right account set up to take the income from when we have those volatile times. Because that's driving performance. That... It is so crazy when we show people how you can have an average rate of return of 10% over a 20-year period and only take out 5% a year to live on and outlive your money in 17 years. People, like, it's not, it doesn't calculate. There's no mathematical common sense for people to connect to when I tell them over a 20-year period, you're going to take out 5% a year and you're going to have an average rate of return of 10%, but you'll run out of money in 17 years. Right, people, but- people are like... How is that possible? Just tell me what happens early, Paul, and I'm going to tell you if you outlive your money or not. Let me ask you a question. How many TV shows do you see where people are talking about income planning? None. How many TV shows do you see where someone's screaming and yelling on on TV talking about the stock market? (laughs) Quite a a few, right? So at the end of the day, we are all conditioned by our environment, and if all you see when you turn on the TV is discussions about performance – it's not surprising that's all people think about, right? That's all. And, and that, that, why, why are there TV shows that have people screaming? Because it's fun. It's addictive. Right? It's, it's addictive. gambling. It's gambling. It's, it's exactly what it is. It's a rush. It sells. That's right. 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 It, 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 but at the end of the day, right, at the end of the day, it, it, as we talk about in our class, we spend a ton of time talking about it. There's so much more to building your retirement plan than performance, which is the reason why we invite you to come to our class. We teach a class. Uh, held at University of Michigan, Michigan State University, the Novi campus, Eastern Michigan University, Oak University. We teach it at our learning center. We've been streaming these courses during the pandemic. You know, we're, we're hopefully at some point get back to live classes. We teach them all the time. It's a 200-page textbook. It costs $29 to attend. If you want to attend, go to retirementplanningedu.com. That's retirementplanningedu.com, and you can register when you go online or call 800 800- Two four zero eight nine eight one. That's eight hundred two four zero eight nine eight one. And we will be back with Kirk and Paul right after this.
Glad you're with us for the Retirement Education Hour. Megan Mozak alongside Kurt Cassidy and Dr. Paul Mettler of the Retirement Education Foundation. We've been telling you about the courses that Kirk and Paul teach, and these courses are designed to give you more information and give you more confidence as you start to think about building that plan for retirement. And this is something Kirk and Paul can help you with, that comprehensive plan that you need in a modern 21st century retirement. It all starts by getting registered for one of their courses. They're taught in small group settings and also virtually. You can take the course online. Just go to the website to get registered. Go to retirementplanningedu.com. That's retirementplanningedu.com. Or you can call to register 800-240-8981. We've talked about what 2020 means for retirements going forward, an election year, a pandemic, incredible market volatility. What is success looking like these days for people who do want to step away from the workforce? They want to retire. They're not sure if they can. Well, Megan, I think, you know, again, this is the year of extremes. It's a really big year from a political persp- perspective and election. In the future of our country, uh, there's, a, there's a lot of things happening. And um, it's going to have an impact on your money and the markets. And what's going to drive success, specifically to, from a retirement perspective? I hope that young people aren't listening to us and And taking this advice because this is different. It's different advice for young people, right? It's buy and hold, own the index and leave it alone for 20 years. But those people within 10 years of retirement or in retirement, this is, it's, it's, it's a different time and what's going to drive your performance. And we, I think we say it every segment, every show, it's really understanding the income piece of the puzzle. It's when do I take my money to live on? How much can I afford to take out and which investments do I take it from and when? And what we know factually, statistically, success is going to be driven by making sure that we avoid taking distributions, taking income from accounts that are exposed to volatility. If you make that mistake and you're going to start taking income to live on or you're forced to because of required minimum distributions, take money out of accounts that are experiencing ups and downs, your likelihood, particularly early in retirement, your likelihood of outliving your money increases by 75%. The key, which is going to drive performance and, and success, is that income plan, Paul. I, 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 it's so hard to quantify without us being able to show all the different illustrations and all the scenarios of just retiring one year different for people who are not really strategic about income planning means outliving their money or leaving a million dollars plus to their kids. That's yeah. it. What, what, I, what I fear, Kirk, is that when people hear that and hear what you're saying, what I fear is, and, and I'm going to go back to my friend in a minute, is that people then naturally assume, okay, if I can't handle volatility, I need to be more conservative. And, this, and, the, and the reality is, again, this goes back to tools in one's toolbox. What tools do people have when their advisors simply manage money in the market? What tools do they have available to them to make sure that they have money at retirement, they have no market volatility. My friend, who, by the way, is extreme, is smart guy, right? He's a PhD smart guy, right? He he was told the solution is go more to bonds. So he's 75% bonds because it's in his, you know, what what they told him is you go to bonds, you have no volatility. Now it turns out, you know, over 10% is, they call them high yield, but 10% is junk bonds. Another 25% were long maturity bonds, all Highly volatile, right? And paying what? Two, two and a half percent? Exactly, exactly. So so my concern is people hear that and think, okay, I get that. So what I'm going to do now is I'm either going to go to cash or I'm just going to go to bonds. And then I've solved the problem. No. So let's talk about what bonds have done over the last three years. Are, you know, how correlated or not correlated? Are, how safe are they? Are they correlated equities or are they not? Yeah, so uh, Paul's explaining is over the last three years what we've – what we've witnessed is when we look at the performance of bonds and stocks, they're 90% correlated, meaning they are moving in a similar fashion at the same time. So Paul's point, and it's a really good one, is what he's saying is if your solution to minimizing taking money out of accounts that don't have volatility, if your solution is bonds, 
Well, it, 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 it hasn't worked over the last three years, and it didn't used to work. It's only been about 25, 30 years when we saw stocks and bonds not being correlated. Historically speaking, stocks and bonds have always been correlated. It's just this 30-year gap that we didn't have that correlation. Now we ha- we're seeing it again where stocks and bonds are reacting similar in volatility. When it goes down, when the market goes down, so are bonds. When the market's going up, so are bonds. So I think Paul's point is he's worried that people are going to take away from our radio show. It's as simple as just having a cash account or a bond account to to take your distributions from. And that may be also either setting yourself up for failure or for sure likely setting yourself up to live less on less than you otherwise could have with a more effective plan with more tools and better understanding how to map out when and how and why to take income. And, and, and by the way, that 30 years that you talked about, what were interest rates doing during that 30 years? Well, interest rates were going down. And That's when right. interest rates go down, I know it's hard to understand, but when interest rates are going down, the value of the bonds that you own are going to go up. So we we had the best 30-year his, run in bonds in history that we, we obviously aren't going to experience over the next 20 or 30 years because bonds can't get any lower. So as interest you rates... Interest rates can't get any lower. I'm sorry. Interest rates can't get any... Thank you. Can't get any lower. So as interest rates rise, the value of your bonds are going to go down. Look, at the end of the day, you've got to invest in your retirement by taking this time to educate yourself. This course is a seven-hour course, 200-page textbook. You're going to make a $29 donation to charity to cover your tuition, and you can attend any of the courses at any of the major universities, or you can stream it live. We're teaching them regularly. If you'd like to register, you can register at retirementplanningedu.com, retirementplanningedu.com, or call 800-240-8981. All matters discussed during this show are for informational purposes only. Opinions expressed are solely those of senior planning advisors and staff. All topics covered are believed to be from reliable sources. However, Senior Planning Advisors makes no representations as to its accuracy or completeness. This shall in no way be construed as a solicitation to sell securities or investment advisory services to residents of any state other than Michigan or where otherwise permitted. Topics should be discussed with your individual advisor prior to implementation. Fee-based financial planning and investment advisory services offered through Strategic Investment Advisors, an SEC-registered investment advisor. Strategic Investment Advisors and Senior Planning Advisors are affiliated companies. This radio show is a paid placement.